So here's five takeaways I got after leaving that gig. And five takeaways maybe you could keep in mind if you decide to leave a tour, if you decide to leave a gig, or if you get fired, or some combination of both. And the first and probably the most important thing in these situations, I think, is perspective. And we can always put some kind of positive or a negative spin on a situation. And I think every situation you are going to learn from it. So if you can say, hmm, I got some information that I can use moving forward, so this is good. Or I'm no longer in a situation I was not a good fit for, this is positive. And if you move forward with that positive energy from an experience that probably is going to be somewhat negative, it helps you move on a little bit quicker. On the other hand, if you hang on to a lot of negative energy, if you're angry, if you're spiteful, I mean, if you're sad, which is all natural, I think when you hang on to that negative energy, it takes a little bit longer to move past that and it kind of impacts everything around you and impacts future gigs. So I'm not saying it's bad to be bummed out about a situation, but I think it's really important to frame it saying, how can I use this moving forward? And the second thing from losing a gig one way or the other, I think is not speaking ill of other people. Uh, and I've talked about this in previous videos, but really why I think it's important not to speak ill of other people, because when you're speaking about a situation and you're telling people all these negative things about it, it's more or less speaking of your need to talk about other people and put them, paint them in negative light than it is about those people themselves. And for the record, I have nothing bad to say about the people I was working with. It just wasn't a good fit. And I have nothing to gain by speaking ill of anybody. Uh, but for me, I know that when I'm talking with other bands, other artists about potentially working with them. And within the first five or 10 minutes, they're speaking poorly of the person I'm replacing. It's a kind of a red flag for me because I think of them as more or less needing to speak poorly about other people to prop themselves up than about those other people that I'm replacing. So I keep that in mind because if an artist wants to hire me in the future and they come on my YouTube, which is very public, and I'm out here talking bad about other people, why would they want to hire me? Because they would think, hmm, if I hire that person and something goes wrong, he's gonna go and paint me in a bad light. You know, that's kind of a turnoff to people. So I really try not to speak ill of other people. I'll parlay that into number three. Don't burn bridges. Sometimes some people want to burn bridges and they burn you and you can't control that. And there's no reason for me to burn a bridge here, but it's also, you never know when you're going to need to cross a bridge in the future. And hanging on to animosity serves nobody. Sometimes if you quit a gig, some people will take that personally and that's understandable. And I would also say like, don't bend over backwards to repair that bridge either if you're quitting for the right reasons. Sometimes it's just not a good fit. It's really important to kind of preserve your energy to where it's needed. So I would recommend not burning a bridge but also if someone's burning it themselves or if they're tearing it down, don't bend over backwards to save it. So the number four thing I would say is realize that it's somebody else's gig. You are there to work for them. You are there to make them sound good and support them. And if they want you to wear your shirt upside down, if they want you to play your drum sideways, I think it's your duty to try to make them comfortable and make them sound as good as possible, feel as good as possible. Also in that same breath, it is somebody else's gig. It's someone, someone else's job, essentially. You are just there playing. Of course you need to compromise with people as well. Of course you need to, it's a give and take. But realize at the end of the day that sometimes some people will ask you to make sacrifices that could put your material, your mental, your physical health, it could, kind of put that at risk. And that's not what you signed up for. You signed up to be a side musician. Uh, so it's okay to have boundaries saying, you know, no, I agreed upon getting paid this and I don't want to take this pay cuts or I agreed upon these conditions and I 
don't want to really deviate too far from them. It's fine to say that. So everything involves some sort of compromise and just realize the gig for what it is. And if it's not your gig, frame it in that light. Last thing, number five, I think it's really important, is avoid trying to save face and ego. Avoid trying to be right. Avoid trying to make excuses and blaming somebody else. Sometimes situations just don't work. And that, that's not necessarily a bad thing, that's just reality. And I think when you're trying to save your face and ego, it's a very short-sighted, short-term solution. Really what speaks for you and your reputation is your overall body of work. For me, I know that I've been really successful in what I've done recently with music. I've worked with lots of people, lots of different artists, lots of different genres, different styles. I've never quit a gig, never been fired from a gig while I was on it. Um, I've lost gigs because of whatever logistical considerations. But I know that, oh, I'm confident in who I am as a musician and sometimes things don't work out and that's fine. I don't want to drag anyone's name through the mud and me personally, I have no reason to. And in fact, like the people I'm working with, they're nice people, great people. I, I honestly wish them well. If they called me up for help, I would say, absolutely, what do you need help with? I would recommend them another drummer. If they need a place to crash while they're in Nashville, I'd say, of course, my home is your home. If they wanted to hang, they need a drummer for a night, cool. It's not really about trying to be right and trying to say, well, it wasn't my fault. It's just about like, okay, sometimes these things happen and it's really tempting to try to soothe your ego in saying that it's somebody else's fault, but sometimes things just don't work out. And I think this is a really important thing just in general is to realize that every gig ends. Everyone gets fired at some point. Everyone gets in a situation where it doesn't work out. Don't take it too personally. And sometimes other people take it too personally and it's like you can't control that. So think about what you can control. And I think treating everybody with kindness, treating everybody with respect, with grace and compassion, it goes a long way. And being real as well. And I'm being completely real right now. The situation just didn't work out and I have no access to grinds. I'm really thankful for having the experience and really thankful for getting to play some music and meet some great people, make some connections with some old friends, make some lifelong memories and learn some lessons. And this is really what life and being a musician is about. It's just about growing. So if you're interested in you know, growing learning more about this stuff, watching this, uh, my career unfold, both ups and downs. It would really benefit me, help me out, to help you out if you would like, subscribe, follow, all that jazz. Follow me as I'm bumbling my way through this because I always tell people I'm not a content creator, influencer, or anything like that. I'm just a musician wanting to talk about my experiences and wanting to share my experiences with other musicians to let people know, it's like, hey, we're all out here trying and sometimes it's confusing. Here's my experience. So I hope that helps. Uh, thanks for watching uh, this uh, past iteration of the Tour Diary and I'm sure there'll be uh, more Tour Diaries coming up.